American airmen stationed at Briscoe Airfield in Algeria in February 1943 heard the thunder of a big B-17F flying fortress approaching directly in their direction, while bearing a rather disturbing appearance. The fortress's tail was almost entirely missing, and its back end was heavily flopping. Only two of the four engines were still functioning and they were giving off a lot of thick black smoke, giving the impression that it may suddenly twist off. B-70's rear wheel was shattered, yet on approach the main landing gear were down. It was obvious that this B-17 flying fortress had suffered severe battle damage. But exactly how was a mystery? Clearly, it took a miracle for this poor B-17 to fly nearly 70 miles back to base on just two engines and missing its entire tail. It was extremely unusual and unheard of to bring back a flying fortress in such a bad shape. The B-17 was visibly B-17 was visibly disabled and the ground crew was ready for an emergency landing. So, this was an emergency landing. The B-17's pilot, Ken Bragg, took great care to keep the tail of the aircraft off the runway as long as he could. As the plane's tail impacted the ground, its rail entirely disintegrated. To everyone's surprise, however, the fortress made a safe successful landing, prompting ground personnel to hurry to B-17 in anticipation of rescuing Ken Bragg, Ken Bragg and his injured crew. Instead, Ken Bragg informed the ambulance that it was not necessary and waved it away right away. The ground team made the most amazing find after the landing. To prevent the fuselage from tearing in mid-air, the crew had deployed a parachute trap. The tail to the body had no flow connection. All other control cables of the B-17 had been destroyed, thus the tail portion could only be operated by a single elevated cable leading to the right side elevator. The vertical stabilizer was split in half horizontally, while the left stabilizer and elevator were totally gone. Amazingly, the one elevated cable that was in control of the flight elevator had miraculously provided enough control to enable a landing attempt using two engines after flying 70 miles. The crew started outlining what had happened. The old American was a member of the 351st Bomber Squadron, which was ordered in to attack the seaports under German control. On the route there, their B-17 had been hit by 88mm heavy German flak, which destroyed its two engines. The remaining were leaking heavy black smoke and were damaged as well. Nevertheless, they were able to get rid of the bombs, freeing weight, and they were now moving back towards the base information. After a short while, a group of German ME-109 aircraft caught up to the formation and started attacking it, while the other Messerschmitts pursued the old American on a top-down approach. One of them took off for the lead B-17 in the formation. The first ME-109 was successfully set on fire and was destroyed by the top-mounted 50 caliber machine guns fired by the lead bomber and the old American. The second ME-109 launched an effective straight strike onto the old American. Halfway through the move, the old American fired a burst of 50 caliber, severely wounding or killing the pilot as it began to draw away to avoid a collision. The German 109, unable to escape a collision in mid-air, crashes into the B-17 flying fortress's tail, cutting it in two. Except for the connection that controls the rising elevator, all of the control cables had been broken. The left elevator and the stabilizers were entirely destroyed, yet this one cable held the entire suction together. The tow system was completely uncontrollable, and the rudder was completely uncontrollable as well. The crew had the option of just bailing out, but they chose to use their parachute straps to prevent the tail from coming loose. The B-17 The old American had major damage but was still in the air, so if the B-17 crashed, the crew would perish with the fortress. The crew was compelled to slow down to lessen the likelihood that the tail would shake off because the plane was now only running on two burning engines and minus the majority of its tail. The remaining B-17s in the formations all circled and slowed to the wounded plane's speed while still maintaining their formation. 
until they were outside the hostile airspace they escorted the fortress when they were secure and beyond the reach of the german fighters the remainder of the formation then moved away wishing ken bragg and the crew well it didn't seem great for the old american to be flying alone as it was losing engine power having little control and falling altitude quickly surprisingly no crew members were hurt but they were unable to escape because of the parachutes that had been deployed to keep the tail attached two and a half hours have passed since the incident the back wheel was no longer functional but the main landing gear was visible and descended pilot ken bragg has plenty of experience he was aware that he could successfully land his b17 if he held on to the tail of the runway until the aircraft had slowed down sufficiently with only a single row of elevators this was challenging unexpectedly ken bragg was able to hold the tail of the runway until it was slow enough to land but when it did the entire tail portion disintegrated according to reports if the me109 had struck the b17 tails just a few inches in front after the impact the entire tail assembly would have detached putting an end to this flying fortress for the entire crew landing it was an exceptional experience this served as an another example of the famous b17 flying fortresses dependability and durability to watch more videos like this consider